Somehow, I had never done a Cave of Dreams before recording this video, and the second I heard that the people entering the cave would be facing their greatest fear, it immediately grabbed my attention and I started wondering, what could Geralt's greatest fear be? I think that we all have a solid guess on what the answer could be, but it's definitely an interesting topic to explore. While the quest is definitely important and one that is absolutely worth doing in my opinion, it's also fairly short and linear, meaning that there isn't much exploration or complexity to the quest, which might lead to a shorter video, but it's still one that I absolutely wanted to make. Towards the end of the video, I'll also cover how to get the quest, as it is surprisingly difficult to get it started, so I'll have the timestamps in the description if you'd be interested to skip and look at that first. So, let's begin. It all starts when we join Blue Boy Lugus's boat near a cave in Art Skellig, a debt that we owe to his father, Madman Lugos, needs to be repaid by helping his son make it back alive from a mysterious cave that he wants to explore. While Geralt is clearly curious about said cave, he doesn't really get any info until we're at the entrance, so here's what we can expect from the cave. Elders say in the Cave of Dreams you face your greatest fears. Face what makes you wake up at night, screaming. Something that's already been will be, or just might be. As we enter with our newfound friends, Blue Boy, Yorulf, and Uv, it doesn't take long to get into some action because we get attacked by some Neckers near a totem, but it's really the totem that's interesting here. After slaying the monsters, we're told that the totem is the location where the herbs must be consumed. And here's what Geralt has to say about these herbs after being told what they are. Oh, in for one hell of a ride. Also, rip the dude with 27 mushrooms on him, which might be a hint that he died from an overdose. But yeah, the first thing I thought after hearing about the herbs was, okay, what we'll see is probably only going to be our imagination and it won't be real. And I think it's something that the quest really plays with throughout its entirety, and it's something that's not really fully answered at any point. You have evidence in front of you, and you can pretty much draw your own conclusions. The second thing I thought was, oh no. Please, not an entire quest spent with the alcohol effect active. And thankfully, no. Nah. I'm not sure if there's anything similar in the rest of the game, but the effect is clearly different and it's not as annoying. Alright, we consumed the herbs and it's now time to explore this very real cave. And I must say that almost instantly, I loved the vibe. The soundtrack, the visuals, everything went together well and it was enjoyable to explore the mysteries of this location. Hey, too big for a Razorback. That's a blue. A blue? With that short a snout? Harbs are robbed you of your senses. Our first stop is Uv's greatest fear. Years ago, Uv insulted King Bran and was ordered to remove his own tongue. Therefore, his greatest fear is basically him insulting King Bran once more with his returning tongue somehow, which... I guess we can thank the herbs for that. You can talk. Uh, I, 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 I didn't. But I, oh. We then fight the warriors and we move on. It's quick, efficient, it's good. After encountering a whale earlier, it's now time for some flying fish and the next fear. This time, we talk with Sirens, who blame Yorulf for the death of his father during a shipwreck caused by Sirens. Maybe Yorulf did something wrong back then. Maybe he could have handled the situation better and saved his father, but the only thing that we know for sure is that it's something that he is scared of and something that he blames himself for to a certain degree. We then fight the Sirens, which is very easy, and clearly, so far, the combat is just not a central aspect of the quest, and I like the fact that if you won't put much care into the fights, I don't mind it if you still make me use my sword regardless. But keep the encounters brief if there's not much to them, and that's exactly what they did. So we can already move on to the next encounter, and we only have Blue Boy and Carol Spheres remaining. Blue Boy likes to claim that he is scared of nothing. It's his turn, so... Let's see. Well, his father shows up to tell the story of how at three years old, he pissed himself in front of everyone after lightning struck trees near their home. Clearly, Madman felt insulted by that and he didn't worry about hurting his son at all, saying things like, I should have banished you. I like how Blue Boy tries to do his best to deny everything and immediately blames the fact that it's a specter and it's not real but I think it's pretty obvious that he is in fact scared of his father and everything, hence at that fact. 
We then fight a blazing madman, and it's finally time for the long-awaited moment. Geralt's greatest fear. And I must say that there is no time to get bored before getting there. The characters we are with are pretty interesting, and it's entertaining to see people being confronted to their biggest fear and how they react to it. Also, like I said earlier, the ambience and curiosity that comes from eating the herbs and exploring this cave. You, know, you never really know what's coming next, and it's just intriguing. So, as we arrive at the location of Geralt's Fear, of course, there is snow on the ground and also what looks like Kaer Morin in the background. Then, Hounds of the Wild Hunt and the King of the Wild Hunt are revealed. We make quick work of the hounds and before slaying Harriden, we get some interesting yet short dialogue between Geralt and him. She will still be mine. Over my dead body. Nothing simpler. What else could have been Geralt's greatest fear at that point in time? Ultimately, it kind of shows that not only is he scared of losing Ciri to the Wild Hunt, he clearly feels like even if he gives everything, even his life in the process, it might not be enough. It's not only scared, it's feeling powerless. It's definitely interesting to explore Geralt's thoughts around this subject. Words can only express so much, whereas this situation is literally the manifestation of your biggest fear, and it's a nice way to show how he truly feels and enhance the menace of the Wild Hunt. I don't think that Geralt ever tries to hide the fact that the upcoming battle is going to be difficult, but seeing it here is irrefutable evidence of that. Again, that's if we assume that the Cave of Dreams has a real effect and holds any true meaning at all. We could argue that the sequence at the beginning of the game while training at Kaer Morin is almost more of the same, but it's definitely different. In the books, Geralt sometimes has dreams that are clearly connected to Ciri, and if she appears to be struggling in his dreams, it usually means that she is struggling for real. And I think that the opening is a way to give purpose to the player and to Geralt and to legitimize the danger that Ciri finds herself into, it's not really exploring Geralt's opinion on the situation to the same extent. It is shown multiple times that Geralt is a man of family. Nothing is more important to him than the people he is close to. I'm currently reading Baptism of Fire, the third book in the main saga, and Geralt is literally at his lowest point I think that I've ever seen him which is once again a result of Ciri being under possible threat. He thinks Ciri is in Nilfgaard and he is ready to pretty much do anything about it, and including going on an almost suicide mission to Nilfgaard to be reunited with her. But if we come back to this quest, at that point in time in Witcher 3, Ciri is in danger and obviously that's what's going to be on his mind. Yes, he also plays Gwent and does every side quest he comes across, but hey, it's a game. So overall, I can't say that the ending of this quest is surprising in any way, but it seems fitting and his fear pretty much had to be about this. At the end of the day, this is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. This quest is a nice way to remind the player of the main thing on Geralt's mind, while also not really exploring it in a deep way. I think there was more to be done here, but it's definitely efficient. After the dialogue with Eredin, we wake up and it's the end. Physically, the cave does not exist. We can explore without the effects of the herbs and all there is to see is rocks. On the other end, the dialogue implies that Blue Boy also saw the same fear of his father. I guess it's a way to show the player that despite the obvious signs that none of it was real, they probably all experienced the same illusions. Gonna tell your father what you faced in the cave of dreams? Of course I will. I've no fear of him, right? So, did all of it happen for real? Of course not. Is it still a true depiction of their greatest fears? I absolutely think so, and it's definitely more than a simple illusion in my own opinion. I don't know if there's something magical about it or what it is exactly, but there's more to it and it's something that I am absolutely convinced of. Before concluding, here's a quick reminder of how finding the best side quest works. With each video, I cover a single side quest and I must answer the question, could it be the best side quest in the game? If the answer is no, of course it's eliminated, but if the answer is yes, it then joins the other winners which will all go head to head in the final video of this series to crown the official winner in a video which will also involve the opinion of the viewers. I plan to cover sooner or later pretty much every side quests that are considered great in the community. Alright now, the verdict. 
Overall, like I said earlier, it's a very linear experience and it explores something that is almost guaranteed to be interesting for the players. The ambience and the visuals are great and I also think that what the quest does with the other characters is also pretty good. It's an absolute must-play quest that I wish I did sooner, but with how short it is and how, I guess, expected the conclusion is, I simply cannot put it in the same category as A Tower Full of Mice, Carnal Sins, or Skellige's Most Wanted, which are our finalists so far. Therefore, I'm going to say that, in my opinion, A Cave of Dreams is certainly not the best side quest in the game. This is pretty much the end of the video, unless you'd like to hear more about how to acquire the quest. Otherwise, thank you for watching, let me know your personal thoughts on this quest. As always, also feel free to share some side quests that you'd like me to cover in this series of videos. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video, and thank you so much for watching. Alright, without any further ado, here's how to get the quest. The quest cannot be done before the king is dead, long live the king, is completed. Once that's done, you also have to make sure that King's Gambit, which is a side quest, has not been done yet, as if it has been completed, you won't be able to get the Cave of Dreams, so you really have to be in between these two. That's the first step to make sure that the quest is even available. Now, if you really want to do this quest, you can directly go to Blue Boy's boat and meet him there, which will start the quest for you. It's not that difficult, but you gotta know where to look, so here's where it is on the map. Now, I think that the best way of acquiring the quest is different, and this alternate way of getting things started feels like a more connected experience, and it's what I'd personally do. What you need to do then is complete the Witcher contract, the Phantom of Eldberg, first. To get this quest started, you can find the notice board in Arenbjorn, or directly go to the tavern and speak to Joran there. Then follow and complete the quest, which I won't spoil, it's pretty good, and then you can go back to Joran for your reward. From there, things are going to get pretty interesting, assuming you meet all the other criteria that I talked about earlier in the video. And again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but there is a sequence of events that's going to happen which will ultimately lead to Madman Lugas giving you the Cave of Dreams quest, and it's without a doubt the best way to get the quest started. Hopefully that was useful. If you have any additional questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll be back soon with a new video. Bye-bye.